Hi everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to part 8 of this tutorial series in creating a character in Blender 2.77. In the last part we created the armature and we added it to our mesh and now we can actually pose our character but we want to make the animation process a little easier by using IK bones or inverse kinematics. And by doing so, we'll be able to control whole parts of the body just with one single bone. Say, for instance, the arm, rather than rotating each bone individually, uh, we'll be able to just control the whole arm with one bone. And to create the IKs, all we need to do is, for the arms, for instance, we'll just select the base of each hand bone in edit mode, which is around the wrist area and we'll extrude back on Y. Now I'll, ex I'll select the left bone and I'll type Alt P and choose clear parent and do the same thing for the right side. And I'll rename this left one uh, arm IK dot L. And the right side I'll just call arm ik.r. And now in pose mode, I'll select the ik and then the forearm bone or the lower arm bone and press shift i and choose to active bone. And then in the bone constraints tab, I'll set the chain length to 2. And now I'll do the same thing for the other arm. Shift I to active bone and then a chain length of two. And now if I grab the IK bone, I can move the whole entire arm. And it looks pretty good, but you can't really see from the side view. If we switch to the front view, uh, you can see that there is a little work that needs to be done with weight painting, uh, but we'll, we'll do all of that at the end. Uh, right now, let's do the same thing for the legs. Uh, we'll select the, the bone at the base of the foot and we'll just extrude those back. And we'll type Alt P and choose clear parent for both of those bones. And then we'll switch over to pose mode. And with the IK selected, we'll shift select the leg bone and use shift I and select to active bone. And then in the bone constraints, we'll, we'll change the chain length to two. And now we have an IK for our legs. And you can imagine how much time that saves for, you know, doing uh, tasks like walk cycles and, and so forth, uh, rather than having to select each bone individually. Uh, it's just a huge time saver. Um, and we can clean this up a little bit as well, just as, as we will with the arms and weight painting, but it actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, so right now with our IKs, if we just select this hip bone and we move it around, um, there's one problem. We can see that the feet are actually moving uh, sort of into the ground. So uh, we want them to stay flat on the ground. So in pose mode and with the foot bone selected, I can come over to my bone tab and just uncheck the box that says inherit rotation for each foot bone. And now if I move the hips around, the feet stay flat on the ground, and that's, uh, that's what we want them to do. So now let's create some IKs for the elbows and the knees. So we'll just select the base of each uh, forearm, and we'll just extrude back. And with each bone selected in edit mode, we'll just use Alt P and then choose clear parent. And now let's select both bones and we'll move them back uh, past, past the tail. And then in pose mode, we'll select those bones and we'll shift select the upper arm and shift I to active bone. And this time we'll just do a chain length of one in the bone constraint tab. 
We'll do the same thing for the other arm. And now if we move the first IK, which controls the, the arm, uh, we can use that second IK to direct the elbow, which direction the elbow is turning or facing. And I believe in animation these are called uh, pull targets. They're, they're basically just um, controls for you know joints like elbows and the knees. And while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and, and make them for the knees as well. Uh, so we'll just extrude those out from the knee. And then Alt-P and Clear Parent for both of those bones. And then select both and drag them forward. Then in Pose Mode, we'll select the bone and then Shift select the upper leg bone. And then you shift I to active bone and then a chain length of one. And so again, now we can control the leg with the first IK bone and then the direction of the knee with the second IK bone. Okay, now let's work on some more bone constraints because with things like the toes and the fingers, uh, we don't really want to have to, you know, for instance, if we wanted to bend the thumb, we don't want to bend each bone individually. That would take a lot of time. So uh, what we can do instead is we'll, in pose mode, select the first bone and then the second bone, and then use Control shift c and then we'll select Copy Rotation. And then over in the Constraints tab, we'll switch from World Space to Local Space. And then we'll select the Offset box. And now if we just rotate the first bone, the second bone rotates along with it. And of course, it is a little time consuming to do this with each finger. But really, in the long run, it saves you so much time in the animation process. Uh, so, um, and definitely there will have to be some weight painting cleanup in the hands as well. And once you're finished with the fingers, move on to the toes. And again, with, you know, the... Uh, the task of creating a walk cycle uh, is made a lot easier by adding these rotation constraints to the toes uh, because now you can just pivot the foot up as it's taking a step. Um, you can just rotate all of those bones at once and it, it really makes that process a lot easier. And I'm also going to add all of those bone constraints to the tail bones as well. And now it's time to clean it all up with some weight painting, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I will give you some tips on, on how to do it. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, one important thing to remember is any part of the mesh that isn't connected, like the teeth, need to be added because they're oftentimes not given any weight. So in this case, I can just hide the head and then paint uh, the whole inside of the mouth, the teeth and the gums and everything to give them 100% weight for the head bone. Uh, just as important though is to make sure that other bones um, do not have any weight at all for certain parts of the mesh. For instance, the neck should not control any part of the head. Um, otherwise, you'll get a little bit of stretching or pulling when you try to animate the, the head bone. So with the neck bone selected, I'll just subtract all of the weight from the head and the inside of the mouth. I also really like in Blender that you can use pose mode while in weight painting, just so that you can see 
you know, as you're painting the weight in for each individual bone, how it affects the actual animation, and it's very cool. Um, but if you ever find yourself having a weird issue with the rotation of bones, uh, one problem could potentially be the axis of the bones, because I noticed that oftentimes in Blender, when you're extruding bones, it sometimes, for some reason, gives uh, some bones a weird axis. So, the way that you would fix that, if you, while in pose mode, if you just select this little armature tab, and then uh, just check the box that says axes, then you can see which direction or which individual axes each, each bone has. Uh, so we can see here that um, a couple of them, the Z axis is facing the other direction or the opposite direction of, of, of how all of the others are facing. So um, the way that we can fix that is just by going into edit mode and then rotating those bones individually. So if I just, uh, you know, type R, Z, 180 for each of those individual bones, then all of them will now be facing the same direction and have the same axes. And that will, you know, most of the time fix, you know, if you have weird rotation uh, issues when you're animating that that'll usually fix the the issue So with the arms you want to make sure that under options the X mirror is checked uh, Because that way when you paint on on one side the other side will be affected as well and I can switch my brush to subtract and I just want to remove any of the weight painting from the body so uh, I want it basically to end where the arm meets the body. And this will put a stop to any pulling or stretching uh, from the body when you try to animate the arms. And there really isn't too much more to say about weight painting. It's kind of a tedious process, but you just need to select each bone. and you know, add the weight to the part that you, you know, want that bone to control. And you want to remove it from areas like this around the leg. I find there's always uh, a lot of extra weight on the body that you need to remove. Um, and in this char case, this character has, you know, these large ears that would be animated as well. Um, so, you know, remove it uh, so that it doesn't affect too much of the head. Um, but that's pretty much all there really is to weight painting. Um, Blender does a pretty good job of doing uh, the weight, you know, the automatic weights. Um, but there's just sometimes a little bit of cleanup to do. Another important thing to note, if you don't, you know, do a lot of animation, perhaps you don't know. But you can select different types of armature. So, you know, if you like the B-bones or the envelopes, or there's wire, uh, which is the, the thinnest and probably least intrusive. Um, I like stick personally because it's, it, it is very non-intrusive. It doesn't really uh, you know, cover up too much of your mesh, uh, but it's also thick enough that you can still select each individual bone from a distance. But a lot of people use the bee bones, and I think it just comes down to personal preference. Now let's parent the eyes to the armature. So with the eyes selected, I can tab into edit mode and press Z to go into wireframe. And I'll just box select one of the eyes. And now I'll press P and choose separate by selection. And now this eye is its own separate object, uh, but it still shares an origin with the, the first eye. So. Uh, it needs its own origin, and the way that you do that is just go to Object, Transform, and then you see you have all of these options here. Uh, but the one that we want is the origin to center of mass. And now each eye has its own origin in the center. 
So in object mode, I can select one eye and then shift select the other, and then go into pose mode and select the head bone. Now if I type control P, I can parent it to the bone. So now both of those eyes are just parented to the head bone. So if I rotate the head, the eyes will follow. Uh, but it looks like as I rotate it, the eyes are uh, pushing out a little, um, or they're not really staying in position. And the reason for that is likely uh, because the ears are not parented to the head, they're parented to the neck. Um, so let's fix that. So just tab into edit mode and then select just the base really of each ear or shift select them and then shift select the head and control P and then keep the offset and that will parent the ears to the head instead of the neck and and now the head rotates and the eyes stay in place. So I think that that's it for this tutorial. Our rig is set up and in the next one we will work on the shape keys for the character and that will probably close out the series. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.